When discussing ship refits and rebuilds, the Italians always come up first. They like to overhaul old ships to make them modern. This could be like Garibaldi, which added ballistic missile tubes to an old cruiser. The old dreadnoughts, Vores, and Dorias are more famous. These are the most extensive rebuilds any old battleship underwent before becoming a battleship. They started as outdated relics and ended up as small, poorly armored, fast battleships of the Second World War. They were somewhat slow for a fast battleship, but considering how they started, it's no small feat this video won't go into detail about the refits. Significant changes will be covered, but it's more focused on if these refits were worth the effort and cost. It's important to remember that the Cavers and Dorias are very different beasts, but the ships that came out were pretty similar in overall capabilities, differing mostly in their secondary batteries. However, the context of the refits is a different story. The time frame alone distinguishes them globally. Financial situation of Italy and utility. There were major differences between the 1937 and 1933 refits. Consider that as we begin the first Conti D cover refits in the context of their time. These renovations would have made more sense for Italy in the early 1930s, when its economy was fragile. Since cancelling their super dreadnoughts before completion, they had not built a battleship since the Great War. Their old dreadnoughts came and went as the Navy struggled to fund and staff them as they grew. More outdated, enter next came the French New Dunkirk. This small battleship was built in 1932 to counter German sponsorship. Dunkirk was not intended for Italy, but she could defeat any Italian battleship, so Italy, in a rivalry with France, saw a need to counter her quickly. Italian naval designers occasionally proposed small battleships. Late 1920s cruisers and Dunkirk-sized rages had no budgetary concerns and at least some intention to follow the treaty system. Similar attempts to modernize old dreadnoughts were based on the apparent impossibility of improving their underwater protection, which was already fatally outdated. The Italians scrambled to counter the new French battleship. The old concept designs and new counters were dismissed while likely superior ships were built. Freshly built from the keel up, the time needed was excessive compared to modernizing the old ships. The new designs in response to Dunkirk used the Kevers entire form, which convinced Italian naval command that the old ships could be adequately underwater protected with a large rebuild. As expected, costs dominated discussions about refitting some or all of the remaining old dreadnoughts. Were a factor, it was cheaper and faster to rebuild the old dreadnoughts than to design and build new ships, as the cost of refitting the two cavorts would exceed budgets in the predicted two years, taking four instead. Still, politicians watched how navy trees affected future capital ships. Construction was a good idea at the time, when rebuilding these two ships and only these two while the Dorias waited made sense. Italy only had old dreadnoughts to modernize to counter Dunkirk. I think a new ship based on the existing design concepts would have been better, but they did what they needed to. The cavorts were rebuilt as functionally new ships, retaining maybe half of their old structure and the rest being completely new ships that were small and under-armored by great war standards and modernized into small, lightly armored, fast battleships. An accomplishment that shouldn't be ignored in 1932, when the decision was mostly sound. Cavour and Chazere were still inferior to Dunkirk, but together they were a theoretical match for the French battleship. Their extensive rebuild, especially their speed, made them superior to the old French battleships, allowing them to sail with lighter forces and dictate engagements. All this sounds good, but maybe Italian studies by 1937 showed they knew these rebuilds were limited. Where the old bow structure joined the new one, they were leaky, they had trouble moving at speed in rough weather, and their armor protection, while improved, was still vulnerable to Dunkirk and British battleships, which were unexpected threats by 1937. The belt armor wasn't improved, and deck protection was still light. They had dispersion issues and were only slightly less capable than Dunkirk's guns, arguably worse, and certainly inferior to British 15-inch guns. Most damningly, underwater protection was compromised. These ships used the Puglisi system hackily, as it wasn't built into the design like Littorio and had to be built inside the hull. As early as 1937, the Cavers were apparent as a decently capable pair of ships, but ones with flaws that remain inherent to their designs, they were small, under-armored, and generally underperforming. 
In light of that, rebuilding them made sense and produced capable warships, just not as capable as Italy wanted. After that, we went to Doria's. The study I mentioned was from 1937. When were Doria's rebuilt? They began in 1937. To be fair, the 1935 decisions modernized them. While the Latorios were far off, the Cavours appeared to be good uses of the money. If Italy needed more forces quickly, rebuilding the old battleships seemed cheaper, despite cost overruns. Italian command circles also believed, most everyone else is refitting old relics, so why shouldn't we? Okay, I'm joking, but that was a major factor in rebuilding the Dorius. A persistent belief that other navies mostly sailed around with ships of similar vintage, so rebuilding the old ships would produce ships comparable to them. France may have put little effort into modernizing their old battleships, but Britain was already a potential foe. Although the decision is questionable, the Italians saw it as necessary because the unmodernized Dorias were useless in combat. Their guns, armor, and combat utility were outdated, so they couldn't compete with modern forces. Taking lessons from the Cavorts and building the first two Latorios was better than keeping them in their great war design. The refits removed the amidshift triple turrets and bore the guns to 320 mm. 6 inches on the remaining 10 main battery guns. The power plants increased power with new turbines and boilers and reduced shafts from 4 to 2. Dorias had more extensive rebuilds than Cavour's, but this can be summed up, Cavour had a new bow grafted on top of her leaky old one. Andrea Doria would have had a new bowel structure that was still leaky where it joined the old hull but not as bad. Second, the Kevrabin received 12 120mm guns and 6 twin mounts and 8 100mm anti-aircraft guns and 4 twin mounts. Doria would directly improve this by adding a dozen 135mm guns and 4 triple turrets to her secondary battery, lifting Latorio's 90mm anti-aircraft guns to replace the old 100mm mounts, and fitting 10 in single mountings. The main differences between the rebuilds are those. It probably doesn't seem like much more importantly, the Doria sisters' rebuilds, which are supposedly cheaper than new battleships, were almost twice as expensive as the cavers, and the cumulative cost was close to that of a single Latoria, not quite there, but closer than the Italian admiral team would have liked. While the decision to rebuild the old battleships came a year before the placing the second pair of Latorios the construction of Roma and Impero is likely to be affected. The sanctioned Italian industry struggled to produce enough steel plates and other products. It's possible that not rebuilding the Dorias would have sped up Roma's completion and the Paro period. If the two Dorias had been scrapped, the Italians would have had more steel. Industry desperately needed for two ships that, while more capable than Kever, were already second line by the time they finished rebuilding in 1940, when Italy was at war with Britain. My best summary of the Doria rebuilds is that they gave Italy two battleships for training and flagship roles after the Latorios were scrapped by treaty after World War II. After that, we return to the video's main question. These renovations are worth it for Italy. Andrea Doria and her sister were hard-pressed by 1937, when it should have been obvious that Italy would abandon the treaty system. Modernizing these ships would produce vessels of questionable practical utility, even compared to other old battleships. Italy would have gained more by scrapping them if they were new medium battleships, which was unlikely but possible. In 1937 or using that scrap and money to speed up construction of the second pair of Latorios, which are likely to be built anyway. Italy probably wouldn't have struggled to finish Roma and Imperial anyway, but the Dorias, which didn't finish until World War II, took up resources that could have been used elsewhere. I love the rebuilt ships, they're gorgeous. Beauty does not equal combat effectiveness. As for the Cavorts, in 1932, Italy needed capable battleships quickly, and modernized battleships were faster and cheaper, so rebuilding them made sense. They were good ships and good investments. Remember, they were supposed to be finished in 1935, and they threatened cruisers and old French battleships in World War II. But I can't shake the feeling that building a medium battleship or battlecruiser would have been better with the money. Dunkirk and Strasbourg were rarely used, and a medium battleship was useless against treaty battleships, let alone post-treaty designs. However, a new ship with a better design would have been more capable than the rebuilt Cavour. Better armor, guns everything. The Cavorts are a mixed bag. 
They made sense and were worth the effort, but a new ship was probably better going forward. The Italians rebuilt both pairs, a technological 